This first. A new variant of SARS-CoV-2, uh, the various causing COVID-19 has been detected in the country. It's the C.1.2 variant and has been detected in Gauteng, KwaZulu-Natal, as well as the Western Cape provinces. So let's get an update right now from the National Institute of Communicable Diseases. That's Professor Penny Moore joining us right now this morning. Thank you for your time, Prof, and good morning to you. What do we know at this point about the C.1.2 variant? Morning, and thanks for having me. Uh, the C.1.2 variant has been detected as part of routine genomic surveillance. So, as as you know from um, many of our previous conversations um, in the, in the press, there's extensive genomic surveillance in South Africa, and what that means essentially is that we, as a consortium, the NGS South Africa consortium, which is a, a network of labs spread across South Africa, is, tries very hard to monitor the evolution of new variants um, and to watch from a sort of an epidemiological point of view, what's happening to the epidemic in South Africa. As part of that normal surveillance, um, the consortium picked up a, a variant called C.1.2, which is distinct from the other variants that we've noticed so far in South Africa. Yeah. It's at very low levels. So it's, you know, although it has um, hit the press, um, it, it's important to note that the majority of infections in South Africa are still caused by Delta, more yeah. than 95% of them. So it's at, at a very low variant, but it's an at a very low level, but an interesting variant. Right. With that being said, I need to ask you this, because I'm sure there are concerns whenever South Africans hear there's a new variant, perhaps there are concerns about, number one, uh, is it a lot more infectious than other variants we've seen, but also could this particular variant evade vaccines? Yeah, so... As, as you say, those are the key questions. It has um, a series of mutations that are um, similar to some of the other variants that we've seen before. So it shares some common mutations both with, with beta, which was responsible for the second wave in South Africa, and also with delta. And we know that some of those mutations do confer um, immune escape, and that means that it's likely that this variant will show reduced sensitivity to antibodies. It also has some mutations that we know uh, are likely to be associated with increased transmissibility, as are, as are many of the mutations in, in the other variants. So it's likely to have both of those properties, but the laboratory test to confirm that is still ongoing. Right. Prof, when was the variant first detected and where is it so far in South Africa? Yeah, yeah it was first detected in May. Um, it um, is now, has now been detected in all of the provinces, though, again, to point out, at really, really low levels. It's also been picked up in several other countries abroad, um, which suggests the possibility that perhaps travellers um, from South Africa perhaps have, have spread, um, have managed, have travelled with this variant and it's been detected in other countries. Um, but the majority of sequences that are C.1.2 are South African. Mm. And you also mentioned other countries there. What are some of those countries where it's been uh, detected? So that we at least have an understanding, as you mentioned, that it could be due to travelling that it's found itself yeah. in South Africa. Yeah, it's been picked up in the UK, and New Zealand, in Botswana, in Zimbabwe, Mauritius, a number of other countries. Um, and, and I guess that's, that's the reason um, that the consortium wished to flag it, is so that other people are aware of the variant. Um, although, as I point out again and again, because it is important, it is at a really, really low level in South Africa and, and globally. Yeah, Prof, I'm sure you can understand how frustrating it is. Just at one point when we think we're dealing with a beta, uh, you know, a delta, then comes a new uh, variant or mutation. And, and I suppose for those wondering, is it normal for new mutations to emerge during a pandemic? Yeah, I think this is our new normal, unfortunately. Um, this is what is going to happen continuously with SARS-CoV-2 as long as we have high levels of infection. And although we're rolling out vaccines in South Africa at a rapid pace um, and globally, uh, there are still a huge number of infections. And as those infections continue to occur, every infection really gives the virus an opportunity to mutate. Um, and any mutation that the virus happens to pick up, that gives it some sort of advantage, whether that's transmissibility or resistance to antibodies, um, that, that mutation is going to spread. So as long as we have infections, um, we are expecting to pick up these variants. We really, really need to get the vaccines out globally. If we can get everybody to take the vaccines, um, that will reduce the spread of SARS-CoV-2 globally. And that's the only way we can reduce the number of variants that we will pick up. But this is, I, I think, a part of our lives going forward. Yeah, the message loud and clear. Thank you so much for speaking to us. Professor Pedimo from the NICD.